Imagine style so eloquent that functionality is secondary. Imagine expert guidance and a process that's all about you. Imagine exceptional quality at a price you can feel good about. Imagine immense satisfaction. Mark Hall Cabinetry, where everything you imagine materializes. Being here helps us to focus on what really matters. It's one place we can all agree on. Our experience here on Sunday touches our lives all week long. Forum Christian Church, connecting, growing, living. Closed captioning provided by Enet. Your pay-as-you-go work comp specialists. We're back out here at John and Toby's house. It's day 204 in uh, mid-Missouri. We have uh, all weather heating and air back here. We're adding a duct into the garage downstairs. So we have heat and air downstairs. We have a conditioned space and we'll go down there and talk about that in a minute. Uh, we just got insulation finished up. We're working on siding. Uh, as soon as we have the siding done, we'll have our electric meter set to the house where we won't be running temp electric anymore from over by the transformer you can see down there. We're also coming pretty soon. We're going to be running the water line from our water meter and connecting it to the house. We'll actually have running water in the house to help with brick, drywall, tile, all those finishing items. We're going to need some water to the house. So why don't we go inside and take a look at what they're doing in the basement. Several things down here that we had to do. Uh, because we have a garage door, it has to be a conditioned space now because of the garage door. As soon as we had the garage here, we had to sheetrock it so that it's fire, has a 20 minute burn rating. So if your car catches on fire, it doesn't burn your whole house down before you can get out. To sheetrock it, we had to build soffit somewhere to hang our sheetrock on. We had to build a wall there. We had to build a wall here. We had to build this soffit to hide our duct work and our plumbing wire, uh, plumbing lines, our electrical lines. So they're gonna have the best of both worlds. They're gonna have a nice warm kitchen ceiling now. Guaranteed water lines cannot freeze. A couple of things we talked about were what they do as far as the voids are concerned with the insulation. As you can see, anywhere two by fours are put next to each other, you can't stuff insulation in there, so they call that a void. So what they do is they'll take white latex caulk and they'll fill all these voids all the way up and down the whole distance of the 2x4. Also see where the top plate runs, they put a caulk, bead of caulk in there as well. We want to make sure that everything is airtight. For in between the stud applications we have R19 insulation which is faced and they staple it on the inside. The reason they do that is when we come and put our sheetrock over top of this, this staple, the paper is not getting in our way. Old applications or applications that are still uh, available today are to put a batted insulation in. A batted insulation doesn't have the spacing on it so what they'll do is they'll put a plastic vapor barrier over it. Well you don't have to do it now that it's faced because this acts as the vapor barrier. If you put, as I was explaining to Jason, as you put plastic over top of this, it actually will create a condensation problem and cause your sheetrock water to bleed through the sheetrock, and we don't want that. Other great features to what Bolivar does, Bolivar Insulation did all the installation of our insulation, all the void filling. They put a bead of caulk where the sill plate runs all the way around the floor, so that's just another added layer of insulation. Around the windows, they stuffed insulation inside the gaps around the window. On a window application, you have a rough opening, you install the windows, there's going to be voids between the 2x4 and the window, so we want to stuff that with insulation as well. All right, the rough opening is necessary because it seems like it'd be easy to have a perfectly square hole, but it, throughout the whole project, it's really not. So they give you a little bit of play on each side, so when you go to put the window in, you can make sure that you have it plumb and square, and then you come back and fill any void. But you got to have some play in there. A lot of people try and frame it too tight and then they end up with a problem because if they have to force a window in, it binds and it won't open and close properly. Biggest issue over here, uh, Jason pointed out earlier that we go from a 10-foot ceiling in the main living, air, living room area to a 9-foot 
ceiling throughout the rest of the home. So the biggest issue is we have to have what is called a fire block around that nine foot mark. And as you see, we have two by fours in between every stud as we go on through. Well, the great thing about the insulation part, if you can't get a two by four in there because you have wires, this is the Romex wiring for our plugs and outlets. So the biggest thing, you can't put a two by four between there because there's wire running all the way down. You put a batted, this is called batted insulation. It's not faced. So you, you put batted insulation in there and that acts as our fire block so we don't have to put a two by four there. Right. And here's the nine foot area. So that top row of insulation above the blocking, that is actually considered like an outside or unconditioned space because it's from the nine to the 10 foot area where that attic is. So it's insulating this 10 foot area from the attic space. So above those blocks is just kind of like a regular insulation and that is our fire blocking and then anywhere the blocks aren't, like Cole said, is where we added the fiberglass insulation as a fire block in lieu of the actual wood two by four blocking. And the coolest thing about this application is when we get all our sheetrock hunt on the ceiling, all our walls, then what they'll do is come back in and do a blown in insulation, which will have like an R30 value to it. It'll be real thick, probably 12 to 14 inches thick, and it'll be just like a, um, an attic full of uh, clouds, if you will. It'll have that cloudy appearance, uh, real thick and fluffy, and that'll be blown throughout the whole house. Yeah, the air chutes, uh, you can see they installed every other ceiling rafter space, and that's to let air come from our soffit up across the roof decking, which will eventually come out to our uh, ridge vent. The ceiling is insulated, so the living space stays nice and comfortable, but the attic space is going to get extremely hot. And the only way to keep that in a reasonable level and to keep moisture out, because you could get, if it wasn't vented, it just get real hot and cook your shingles. Uh, it also caused problems heating and cooling the house. So by sucking air, cooler air from the bottom up through these vents and out through the ridge, help keeps the attic in a reasonably comfortable temperature. 